tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. This week, I decided to take it down a notch. Um, let's check up on our fellow youth. <laughs> See how they're doing and what they're up to, um, given that we're all under GCQ. So I invited a friend of mine. He's been my friend since college. Um, his name is Carlos Rivera. Hey, Carlos, are you here? Hey, Erica. How are hey, you doing? Hey, Carlos. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? It's nice to see you. I know, nice to see you. It's been a long time. I mean, so hi everyone. So I'm Carlos again. Um, so I'm a professor at I Academy. I teach user experience design. I'm also a marketing consultant. So previously, I I was in advertising. Um, so as a professor, I teach basically web design, um, research and uh, research. So I teach like college students around second to third year, college students. So it's a really fulfilling uh, profession, though it's really hard now to do it online. Because like, you know, in a classroom, um, it's when you teach close to 30 people, sometimes it could get pretty boring already, but what more online. So it's really challenging to keep people engaged, especially now. Right. I mean, I can't imagine you being a professor, Carlos. <laughs> it was just like, right. It was just like yesterday, we, um, we were in college. Yeah, so background, um, Carlos and I met in college because of carpool. Different course though. What was your course? I was um, MMA, so mixed martial arts. I mean, multimedia <laughs> arts. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I couldn't imagine myself being a professor either. I remember when I was in high school, I hated school. Um, so the biggest irony is that I became a professor. <laughs> so that's that. I know. I know, but hey, you know what? I'm proud of you. I mean, um, life just takes us to different places you know how do you teach your students now okay i well i'm actually really lucky that uxui is a subject that you can easily teach online mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the so like with my students um usually we use a lot of cloud-based software programs yeah. online and then i check their work through there and it's easy for us to communicate using zoom or google meets or google hangout mm -hmm. Uh, so we've, I think, in terms of my class, we've adapted pretty well to online learning. Though there's still a lot of elements of it that, I, that you know, obviously would prefer to teach in person rather than online. Um, UX UI is mainly like a lot of web design or mobile app, app design. So luckily, people already use the computer will already be using their computer a lot, anyways. So, did you get to teach in a classroom before? Um, the lockdown. Oh, it's weird. I've never actually thought of that. Um, that's the funny part. Um, I was actually supposed to start teaching in February, but then like I had a retreat, so I moved the class to next week. And then before you know it, there's quarantine happened, so I never actually met my class in person. Um, all the yeah. relationships we formed was, were online. Was online. Yeah. What's it like being a teacher specifically a professor like a college professor i get again like we it yeah, was just like yesterday we were in college and then now you're like we were just the students and then we had like a professor now you're in their position yeah What's it's it like? <laughs> well i felt like i never really appreciated uh, my professors back in college uh until i became a professor <laughs> but it's um it's really well one it's weird like it's weird in a sense that I can remember, it's only like, it seems like it's only yesterday that I remember being a college student and then now I'm a college professor. So that aspect is weird. Um, but it's definitely a new challenge as compared to working, as compared to like balancing it with an office job. So in the office, um, sometimes I'd be a team leader and I would be, and I would, I would be training and teaching people. Um, so it was kind of a skill that I kind of brought into the classroom. Though it's very different when, when it's students, obviously. Um, the relationship is different. So, yeah, it, it, it's challenging in that aspect. It's a bit weird in another aspect, but it's also very fulfilling. Um, so I've been really, like, I, like 
I guess one part why I really wanted to teach. Um, I've actually wanted to teach for a long time. It's just something I never like told anyone. But I've always wanted to go into teaching because I feel like I came from a very good school. Like Benil is one of the best in multimedia arts. Um, I've been in like really good com. I've been in really good companies, and I've been with people who trained me really, really well. And I wanted to give it back. I wanted to share my experience, and by teaching, it's really fulfilling in a sense that I get to share. I get to share like what I learned in the industry, um, what I've been doing to the next generation, even That's though so- the generation is just four or five years younger than me. <laughs> That's so nice to hear, Carlos. I mean, as a friend, I'm very proud to hear that from you. The biggest adjustment is really like learning how to teach because I thought I'd be learning to teach in a classroom, but instead I'm learning to teach online through a screen. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's you know, I was I was gonna ask you, no, um, how is the whole. Um, GC well now we're under GCQ no but for students it's gonna take a while um well, even for the teachers I mean for everyone who's still studying yeah, so right. it's gonna take a while for you guys to go back to the classrooms no so how is um how is it how is it affecting um you as a professor and your students? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Um, so I think the earliest will be go will be able to go back to a classroom is around August, but even then, like they want to push it further, which you know, like we may or may not agree with. But so it's really difficult in a sense that a lot of classroom interaction is really based on forming a relationship with students. Um, one professor told me, like I a professor of mine told me, I don't just teach subjects. Uh, most especially, I teach people. So to form that relationship with with people, with real people, with real students, is kind of difficult online because I feel people learn better when they're with when you can feel a personal interaction. And I guess how it really takes a toll in the classroom is that a lot of the kids face anxiety. Like a lot of even the teachers or even people who are working, there's a sense of anxiety around quarantine or GCQ that makes it hard to focus on your work. Um, so when that comes to teaching, that means we also have to be mindful of how the students are learning, um, how we can adjust our lessons. We can't put too much pressure on them. Um, when we're given our orientation about start restarting class during the quarantine, we were told that, like, I, I really like this. I really like this um, piece of advice. It can even apply to managers. But we're not when we're with the students. We're not just their teachers. We're also their therapists. So it's learning to come up with that safe space for the for the children for the why am I calling them kids? But it's learning to come up <laughs> with that safe space for the students to learn, um, to feel them to feel themselves, and also to be engaged in the lesson. Uh, I know there are calls like like we should just like move classes until like next next term or next term, but for some in my experience, some of the students they find the class. Of, It, um, therapy, like some of them really like working because it takes it takes them away from where they're at right now. So some of them do need that, but then there are some. But then again, there are some that it does have that added pressure, and we have to learn to be mindful of those. In especially in quarantine, we have to be mindful of those boundaries and learn to adjust um, according per student. So it's not really there might be a bad conception that we're spoon feeding, like we'd be spoon feeding the students. But I think it's a very delicate time, and like as teachers, our first and foremost duty or responsibility is the student. Yeah. So that's how we operate in quarantine. So it's just being more mindful of the right. students. You, as a professor, um, you're fine, the man, with adjusting. Yeah, yeah, it's a very difficult time. So like. Um, As a teacher, you really have to learn. Yeah, really have to learn to adjust um, because it's it's nearly it's useless, naman or insensitive, if you keep giving them work that they can't keep up with and they can't learn from. Because at the end of the day, it's them being able to take in the information that counts. So what I've been doing is I've been because um, you should. I've been making like small videos for them. So it's short five to ten minute videos that they can watch at any time. 
so that even outside the classroom they can learn and i know that even outside of like when they're done with our class like when they graduate or they move on to the next level um with those videos they're still able to watch and go back to them so it's like a lifelong learning process <laughs> just keeping the materials keep them updated so it's not just with the confines of this three or four months that we have in the term but they can learn from me or i can share it share it with them yeah oh that's really nice carla see i again i've known Carlos for quite some time and I know this guy has a very big heart. So, <laughs> you know what being a professor suits you. I'm sure your your students and your future students will 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 love you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, for my next guest, I have Maki Mitsuhashi. Hey, hey Erica. Hi Maki, how are you? Hey, I'm good. At least you got my name right. Yes, I know. I had to practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So, okay. So, Maki, tell us something about yourself. Okay, so, um, hi, I'm Maki. Actually, my full, my actual name is Masaki, but yeah, you can call me Maki. But mm-hmm. um, in terms of my college, so I graduated from UP Manila. So I studied BS Biology, and well, I took a different path. So I used to study um medicine and. MBA from Ateneo, but um, I had to soul search, <laughs> and then at the same time it landed me here um, studying with Carlos and Shanice, um, the one who will be talking with us later. Okay, so okay, so UP Manila Biology then Medicine. Okay, so yeah. now what are you up to? So now um, I'm up to doing freelance and consulting work. So primarily, um, I do capacity building, and then at the same time, I also empower communities, particularly in the context of disaster and resilience, and at the same time, building the capacity of young people. Okay, so how do you um, go about that? Well, actually, I actually go on on the ground. Um, I was actually based in Tacloban for a year, so I did um, environmental, and then at the same time, disaster programs there. Actually. Wow, one year. So this was during um, Yolanda. Yeah, this was during Yolanda. So um, I did some of the programs that improved the overall resiliency of the communities there. Wow. Okay, okay maybe you could share our, um, some of your programs that you did well, in Tacloban. Well, well, there, um, when I was in Tacloban, I did like games with the kids. And then at the same time, some educational programs that we did with the community. Because um, when we were there, we actually realized that children and young people are really one of the mo- more vulnerable people in the communities. So what we wanted to do was try to empower them. Because actually when you realize that when you empower these young people and then these communities, you actually also build up the resilience of the community. Galing. So, okay, curious. What was it like living in Tacloban for a year? Actually, it was ane, really surprising because um, hindi rin naman bagoy na parang we're so used to the comfort of being here in Metro Manila. But when you're there in the community, you actually realize na things are actually really different. And then you can't really paint people the same way that you paint the people here in Metro Manila. But actually, it was also life... Um, groundbreaking for me, I guess, or wow, realization. Um, I actually realized so much. Like, kalimbawa, totoo nga yung kasabihan nila na parang those who actually have less have much to offer. Yeah, I'm gonna have, yeah. I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Grabe, yeah. I can't, I don't know, imagine one year in Tacloban. But, you know what? It's nice to hear that we have people like you helping them out. I'm sure you were a big help to them, especially during that time. So, galeng, galeng. Um, yeah. During the community quarantine, I actually put up um, a startup with my friends. So, we're co-founders to put up Lipad, which is the League of Innovation and Intellectual Property Advocates. So, um, what we do is actually we um, particularly diba, during this time of COVID, you actually realize na parang there's so much room for innovation. So, parang at the same time, everyone can be innovators. Eh. Kasi when you think about it, a lot of people don't associate them as innovators. Kasi na-realize nila na parang innovation is 
innovation feels like an elite term. Pero when you think about it, because everyone can actually be innovators if they actually know that they're innovating in the first place. Because the balik na um the basic thing about innovation is that you start with a problem, and you actually have different problems everywhere. So parang ano yari jan? It's just on identifying the problem, making sure na you understand the whole situation properly, maximize all capacity, and then you develop the innovation. But at the same time, when you develop because innovation, de ba? You also have to protect it. That's why, parang yung ginawa namin was, um, you're not only developing innovation, but you're also protecting your idea. Because that's the only way by which you can incentivize people to innovate. Eh. So, given that yeah. uh, we're under GCQ, um, what are your next steps, especially with the whole freelance? I mean, Lipad is um, doing well, naman, but um, yeah. you mentioned yeah, that you do freelance work as well. Well. Yung the thing now is, I think, on how to try to empower people at the least through digital media. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, wala, ano eh, we also have to adapt na rin eh. Parang, people thought na parang very foreign concepts before, but it's more of like how to help each other bridge the gap. Because before, fintech was a really foreign concept for everyone. Eh. Parang, people don't really mm-hmm. trust the, ano eh, you mm-hmm. na parang ilalagay mo yung money mo to a certain application. But when you think about it, na, na parang everyone's actually using fintech now, almost everyone, mm-hmm. sure. Pero mm-hmm. yun nga, parang it's more of like how do you bridge, bridge these technologies so that the, even the vulnerable, the poorest of the poor, can get access to it. Para tisip si ever man, they can also, ane, eh, parang they can also get access. Because a lot of the ano naman eh, the things are being done also digitally. Like for example, in some LGUs, some of the money that they receive are transmitted. To ano maganyan Gcash or whatever. Pero yun nga, it's more of like how do you bridge? Para at least mm-hmm. ever man, uh, how do you bridge that to make sure that they can also enjoy what you're having? So parang siguro that's would that would be my next step is on how to help um, other organizations to be able to reach you mga poorest of the poor, the vulnerable. Right, so we have one more guest to interview. Her name is Shanice Garcia. Hi Shan. Okay. Hi, Hi Shanice. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good to be here. I'm great. Yeah, hopefully everyone is as well on a very nice Saturday. <laughs> I know, it's very, it's, oh, it's, actually it's kind of gloomy. It's getting gloomy really now it here. Yeah. Here in Makati. It's pretty nice. Ah, okay, you're in Makati. <laughs> okay, so yeah. this might go to you. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Let's all stay yeah. safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Shanice, um, what's this? Where? Tell us something about yourself. Ah, uh, so like everyone else that went before me, I'm also working right now. So mm-hmm. a little different from them, though. However, is that I'm working in IT as a project manager. So I get to handle systems and all those nerdy stuff <laughs> and I also do a lot of operations work so having to deal with um, teams and also different clients and delivering the services that we have since you know, we create IT solutions so that's me but then also like Carlos actually I just remember because he, he shared that he has a background in design so before I actually became involved in the IT world. I was actually doing design work. So it's a pretty oh. fun thing. Uh, uh, I think we were chatting before and we mentioned that we actually started out doing something else. So like for me, I was doing design. Then now I transitioned to a totally different world. <laughs> How did you get from design to IT? Actually, that's a story that I like telling people. Because before, I was working with a startup called Canva. So it's an Australian oh, startup. Yeah, Canva. I was working for them. So I was I started out as a graphic designer. And then, basically, when you just see things that could be better, of course, you try to step up, say some suggestions. Then eventually, mm-hmm. it became something that I was passionate about na, that, hey, I'm seeing a lot of things that we could improve, and I think I can organize how to get there. So <laughs> that mm-hmm. kind of began the transition to this whole new world of like project management and 
systems and software development things that I'm actually also passionate about because I was doing a lot of development work. I mean, like software development work than the one before as a graphic designer. So, uh, yeah, I think like I'm just generally someone that's interested in a lot of things in this space. This mm-hmm. IT space gave me a chance to explore all of that. So it's really fun. What is your <laughs> what is the scope of your job? So for me, um, I'm working on a. Um, a lot of <laughs> projects actually. So I work with Medilink Network. So um, it's not. I guess it wouldn't sound as fun like a startup like I'm, a, but like I'm also someone that's very passionate about a lot of things that's for the betterment of people. So this one in particular deals with healthcare solutions. So what we get to do is to make sure that everyone can get to the places that they want to get availments from and mm-hmm. actually get those properly. So like, for example, if you're a member of um, an HMO network or something, we will make that process easier for you by giving you, like, for example, the card, making sure that when they swipe it, you get it immediately. So that's one of the projects that I'm working on. So making sure that all those systems are um, accessible at all times, they're able to enable all members to get their medical availments all the time. See, I'm super excited about it. And especially, it's like, especially now, I think like everyone should be super in touch, super aware of their medical life. They should be like healthy, more aware of what they could be doing better. So it's perfect then. So aside from those system stuff like architecture things mm-hmm. uh, i also get to work on a lot of data analytics projects so sorry data i know analytics. i kind of sound okay, like wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> data analytics okay that's fine i could kind of relate um i mean i have to analyze also data marketing wise though yes, yes. but you are in it so okay <laughs> I, I mean, I'm interested to get data analytics. What? <laughs> how do you, as an IT project manager, um, what kind of data do you analyze? How so, does this go about? Yeah, so, Shemper, if people use something, there would be, like, in marketing, there were, like, there would be engagement metrics, they would, there would be um, certain conversion metrics that you would be looking for so of course um, it also works the same so you want to see if there are any spikes trends that our clients or us should be um, aware of so yeah kiki things like that so <laughs> it's but it's fun i really like being in this space because especially since i have a design background i think that's one thing that um, most people in the industry lack i would say na parang, of course there's a lot of information a lot of things you want to share but then how you communicate it syempre, you wouldn't have this space to use words all the time so like sometimes you would have to use um, graphs presentations <laughs> and other pretty things <laughs> and i think that's the kind of thing i also like doing because i i do design so yes. it's it's fine. It's like the intersection of all the things I like. <laughs> As a um, IT project manager, um, you have your own team, correct? Yes, we can. Do okay. It. And how is how is it, naman, with your team? Um, do you check up on them? Because Carlos mentioned a while ago that you know this um, pandemic is affecting a lot of people. So, yes. um, how do you go about that as an IT project manager? Siguro one of the things that has really worked well for our team, actually for most of the teams I get to work with then, is that we do regular checkups. So, what we do is we have end-of-day reports. We check up on each other that, hey, how are you? Are your tasks doing well? Even just like on a relational um, level now as friends. Not even mm-hmm. that, hey, <laughs> you need to submit this to me. But like, you just mm-hmm. want to make sure that everyone's still in the right, right headspace. Everyone still um, is equipped with the things that they need to get the job done. And I think yeah. that kind of support is one of the things that is super important, especially now. Because 
at least before because I remember me um, in the office, me and my office friends, we really go out a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. we go out for merienda, we go out for quick mall breaks sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or of course, you would always have those inumas, right? There are a lot of ways to like de-stress, have that space. But now that we're all at home, and that's a little harder to manage and actually like facilitate that kind of um, human touch that emotional mm-hmm. thing yeah. that you want to keep going with these people i think that's super mm-hmm. important now and i think it works for our company mm-hmm. as well because now we have a lot of social activities so <laughs> we yeah we have like learning sessions mm-hmm. we have games after work even if it's just through google meet so mm-hmm. that kind of support uh, we still get to provide to everyone and I think it helps okay, a lot. Maybe you guys could share um, your stories in AIM. Um, <laughs> any memorable stories? <laughs> it's, di- it's different because we're all learning online. So it's, it's funny because on weekdays, I'm the teacher. Then on weekends, I'm the student again. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, what I miss the most about it's very different like when you're when you're learning online because one thing that's really important to us is like being with each other so it's not just the lessons that we learn but the people that we're with and i'm really glad like even during quarantine i have these guys like we go like to zoom inumans like once a week or twice a week to catch up mm-hmm. um though we'd prefer to see each other in person but um yeah. it's not possible now but um yeah, but right now how we're keeping up with quarantine is is that like we're just like aside from teaching each other, we also catch up online. Just have those teaching time with each other. Well, before is ECQ, we would always like meet every time. So parang any time na parang we just wanted to see each other, we can just say na parang hey let's hang out, and then people will be like okay G. <laughs> Pero ngayon parang uh, guys let's hang out okay via Zoom. <laughs> I think it's yun medyo sad eh, na parang at the same time kasi yung may, you miss everyone eh. Pero at the same time kasi I'm also grateful na parang there are platforms like Zoom or even platforms like online conference areas where you can just go and go online and talk with each other. Kasi I mean doon mo rin din marirealize na parang physical presence isn't everything eh. Parang you can actually as long as you uh, hang out with the people that you actually really like, na parang at the same time, you realize that parang, okay, it doesn't matter as long as nakikita ko sila or mga kaisa ko sila. Mm-mm. Totoo. That's really true. <laughs> oh, I miss my friends too, Loy. <laughs> if my friends are watching, hi friends. Well, okay, Carlos. <laughs> okay, thanks for sharing, Maki. How about you, Shanice? Experience before and during? Uh, very similar to what they said. Actually, like, it was hard even before trying to balance everything. Because um, the program we're taking is a part-time one. So, um, and I personally, I, I, I get weird feelings if I don't have work. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I, I, I made it a point that I have work while studying. So, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it was hard then. It's a little harder now, even. So, surprisingly, I mean, for me, because I'm not stranger to uh, remote work setups. Because before, um, I get to work with our teams in Australia already. So, like, there's this whole time difference thing, mm-hmm. um, a lot of online communication, and there's just a lot of adjustments again. Because, of course, now, everyone everywhere it's like we're all in long distance relationships with all the things that we do so it's, yeah. it's, you know, that's a lot of adjustment i think that we have to do <laughs> so um it's a little hard yes but mm-hmm. i think since we have such great support groups like for me i i get to talk to these two a lot <laughs> daily <laughs> so <laughs> support group but for me because i'm I, I I thrive off that energy of like communicating with people and all. So even if 
were physically distant, I think. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, we have a lot of innovations, like <laughs> like the internet, that enables yeah. us to still perform and be mm-hmm. great at what we are doing. So I think that's very helpful and great to have at this point in time. We're in everyone's digital now, confined in yeah. these little rectangles. That <laughs> it's great, mm-hmm. though. It's something new for everyone, and I think we're all trying mm-hmm. to adjust and be better at With it. that. Um, and I hope to meet you, Maki, and Shanice soon. Carlos, I hope to see you soon as well. I'll it's been a soon. while. Yeah, I'll see you soon. But again, thank you guys so much for being on my show today. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys. <laughs> Bye. See you thank you for having us. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so that ends today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed as much as I did. It was really great to hear their insights and um, really share their their thoughts. Uh, again, this is why I created the show in the first place. Because I know, me, myself, I'm part of the, the youth. So, you know, I, I know that we all have something to say, that we all have a voice. So, I, um, I hope this show is a platform for that and also for the viewers to learn something as well from me and from my guests. Stay tuned for the next episode only here on Z81 Radio Manila.